Thanks for coming. Just a couple quick comments. Uh, very pleased. It all starts with uh, uh, great defense, and I've really felt our defense has been getting better all year. Other than um, we had some big plays against us the last few couple weeks, but for the most part, you saw this coming, and uh, we had a lot of respect for the quarterback, uh, Rutgers quarterback. I think he's one of the top efficient passers in the Big Ten in the country, and then third downs are we're uh, leading the conference with 50%. So I thought our defense played outstanding. Then the obvious is uh, JT Barrett uh, came in and played very well, energized us. Uh, Ran the ball very well. Obviously, we had a turnover, but I think we were pen penalty free on the road with a you know it was a loud stadium, and uh, that's a, that's a lot of discipline on a team to go no penalties in, in that kind of environment. So, very pleased. Uh, bye week time. Uh, best thing about eight and zero is a chance to go nine and zero and and get rested up. And uh, I'll certainly answer any questions for you. Second row, right, Tim. Yeah, Urban uh, Ezekiel Leon, he also went over 100 yards again. Uh, very slow start, 15 yards in the first half. Yeah. But you guys get straightened out with both him and the offensive line. Going well, to you know that's the thing that's happening right now. If we if we're not very efficient throwing the ball, which we are now, I mean we're uh, 17 of 21, and uh, teams know to stop Zeke. They were doing a good job. Uh, they were loading the box, and you know that's you have to take shots down the field. Uh, I should rephrase that. We have to complete shots down the field. Anybody can take shots, and that's kind of what we did earlier in the year. Now we're completing them, and now there's some, you know, there's some conflict on the defense. You want to take away Zeke, then you better. You're going to see some guys uh, singled up, and uh, uh, Curtis Braxton and Mike Thomas all had big hits down the field for us. Second row left, Bill. Oh, what I saw, uh, JT doesn't surprise me. Uh, you know, I think he's back, and you know that injury was. Uh, I didn't see it in spring. I didn't see the JT Barrett because obviously he was immobile and couldn't go. And then uh, training camp, I didn't. You know, I, he was getting better and better and better. He's only, he's still only a redshirt sophomore, and uh, I think he's in full swing now. Obviously, and that that was a progression throughout practice and development. And uh, I thought he played great. Third row uh, back, Doug. Urban, you had said a couple weeks ago that JT, like a lot of guys, kind of got his rhythm, gets rolling. That's when you really start to see it. Did you sense that at all as the game went on? Oh, yeah. Just got more and more comfortable. Yeah, I felt, uh, you know, especially throwing the ball, I think, uh, especially the way they were playing us, that uh, he was really efficient with throwing the ball, checking it down when you're supposed to check it down, taking the shot and being accurate. You know, the balls to, uh, uh, and we had a couple other shots that were, I think, a couple PIs, if I remember right. But we, you know, the, they were threatening us to throw the ball deep. And we completed them. And that's the key. That that had to happen tonight. Uh, front row right over here, Zach. I think uh, you know. You ask a defensive coach. Anytime you got a guy that can throw and run, that's a, that's a problem. You know, that's uh, you, you see, uh, you know, you see loaded defenses where the coverages aren't very complicated, uh, and uh, that, that's what JT gives us. Uh, front row, Mark. We've also spoken about JT's leadership ability. Now that he was back as the name starter starting the game, did that manifest in ways you hadn't seen? Sure, the sure. I think he's a unique guy that. Uh, was voted captain by our guys as a sophomore. I don't. Someone told me it's never. I haven't done the research yet, but I don't think it's ever happened at Ohio State. That tells you the respect he had. And obviously, when you're taking the first snap, and you know he says things to the team right before we go out, and he's a, he's a, he's a really good leader. Back row right, Clay. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, congratulations. You clearly got better tonight. Where was the biggest lead? You think? Well, I think there's many areas. Uh, Defense is where you start anytime you hold that offense. It's been putting up a lot of points, a lot of yards, uh, balanced offense, and uh, you know to basically pitch a shutout for 59 minutes and what was it, 45 seconds or something. That was tremendous effort by our defense. We won the field position battle, but the thing that you're not seeing, you're not seeing the self-destructive stuff, whether it be turnovers, interceptions, or penalties. And when you go on the road and it's all silent, because that was a loud environment. And silent, not have any penalties. That's someone just told me that I was I was leaving the locker room. That's might be the most impressive thing. That's how locked in they were. Did you say anything to JT after the fumble? Oh, uh, he got a little. You know, I, someone said he got dangerous, limping a little bit. But I just and I told you know he and, and Braxton does that sometimes. And I think you know if it's not there, put your foot in the ground and get positive yards. Don't th try to do all that stuff. And that's that's not that's not what he should be doing. So that's all I said. Don't. Second row right, Ari. Last couple questions here. Urban. Uh, Surprised 
guys that he's as advanced at catching passes downfield the way he is with two now that you guys are going to be taking more of a designed quarterback run approach in your offense as it increases responsibility even more so than before as a blocker to, to get onto the field? Yeah, he just yeah, he had three touches, it looks like. I wish he had more. Uh, He's, we're, we're doing the best we can with him. I am very pleased with him. I, I think he's got a, you know, he's, he can certainly play receiver at the next level. You know, he's that close right now. Where, you know, two months ago, you know, just getting lined up and getting in a stance, and and uh, and I, I'm so we're, we are so committed to get that guy. He's done so much for this program. So I just I'm very pleased with the way he's blocking, the way he's catching the ball. He's he's really getting good at his route running, and and uh, I'm really excited for him. Well, I don't think it's. We've always we're always going to have a perimeter run game. I, I think I get your question. It, it doesn't. It's he's got to be a good blocker regardless. Far left over here, Paul. I think we've improved every week. I think we're playing a very high level right now and. All that matters is next week uh, they get rested on tomorrow. They're off completely. Monday they just get some treatment, and Tuesday we go again. So there's a good mindset in there. We're gonna we got to continue to keep getting better. We know what's coming down the pipe here, and, and some really tough games coming up. So some teams get better, some teams don't. We're getting better right now. Back row, far left, gentlemen. Coach. Oh yeah, I got. Uh, I, I know Rutgers very well from my one of my closest friends is Greg Schiano, and uh, I came here when he was right in the middle of the building. I spoke to the clinic here one time, and Coach Flood. I admire him, and I think this is a great place. I think, you know, the future is bright for uh, Rutgers. I think just look at the environment out there, and first of all, it's as good a high school football as there is the United States of America. So. Uh, we're going to park ourselves here a lot and try to get as many players as we can out of Jersey because I, I, I've always felt that way about New Jersey. So that was a big win, and we have a lot of respect for Rutgers. And, and final question up here front right, Ralph. Urban, uh, clearly this quarterback thing has taken a lot of bandwidth, and it seems like it's also been you know, stressful may not be the right word, but it's also it's definitely been something you put a lot of thought into. It does it, is it sort of comforting now to go into a bye week having some quarterback peace? It really does a great question, and it really does. You know, I don't want to admit that, uh, but it does. And uh, you know, Cardell comes in and goes three for three. His, his mentality was great. He's very positive. He's working. You know, he's a rookie too. You know, these guys are, you know, they're not the established three, four-year starters. You know, one's a sophomore, one's a started. Uh, he's ten and zero as a starter. So. Um, I just want to see those guys continue to get better and better and better, and, and they are. And that it might not be at the speed that maybe the so what you said, the noise out there, why and why this, why that. They're still very young quarterbacks. And uh, it's very important for Cardell to continue to grow. And obviously JT is gonna you know, he gets better every time he goes out in practice.